Hello and welcome to a gentle introduction to fatigue life prediction. Over the years the issue of fatigue as an addition to the static structural FEA has become increasingly important and is more or less expected to be available at the click of a button. A key point for commercial fatigue software is that it relies on finite element analysis results as input data. Based on the whole idea of allowing easy exchange of data between Abacus and FESAFE, um, the decision was taken to develop a plugin for automated modeling of gear geometries in Abacus CAE, which would also include fatigue life prediction capabilities in the analysis workflow. Over the next few slides, I'm going to demonstrate how a direct coupling between FEA and fatigue life prediction can be provided with the help of a smooth and intuitive interface and to perhaps provide a vision of how the fatigue analysis experience can be integrated in the simulation process chain. So why did we go ahead and, and, uh, and decide to develop fast gear fatigue analysis? For one, gears and gear wheels are very common machine elements that figure in a multitude and a huge range of applications. Um, there is a big downside if you're trying to predict the life based on a standard, be this either British, German or American, and that is simply that the life prediction isn't really that good. If you then turn to numerical solutions and would like to look a little bit more in detail, on what goes on, then effectively you are going to need a lot of time consuming analyses. The geometry of the tooth itself isn't actually that trivial to generate in spite of what one might think. We have many many CAD packages available to us these days, very sophisticated ones, but generating that geometry is not a very simple thing to do. And finally the biggest challenge possibly was to try and simplify this entire chain of working without oversimplifying it, so thus to still retain enough resolution in the result quality. So what can you do to simplify, or what did we think we could do to simplify? We started off by looking at the stress situation in, in the tooth root, which effectively is what leads to the eventual fatigue crack initiation. This diagram depicts the Tresca equivalent stress on the vertical axis and the normalized meshing distance on the horizontal axis. If we focus on a single tooth in a meshing, with a meshing being the noun describing two gear teeth coming into contact rather, or as opposed to the to a finite element mesh, then we will start out with image one and the tensile or, and look at the tensile side of the tooth marked with a yellow circle with a black dot in it. We will travel along the highlighted points 2, 3, 4 and finally arrive at the position 5 where the stress is at its maximum. After that point the stress will continue to decrease until the tooth comes com goes completely out of contact. This, if we want to summarize it in terms of fatigue, effectively means that we are looking at a, a stress history where we are going from point 1 to point 5 and then from point 5 back down to point 10, thus effectively rendering our fatigue cycle between points 1, 5 and 10. What are the consequences of this finding? For one, we will only need to analyze the position of maximum stress and if we have a load ratio of 0 we will need merely one analysis whereas for an R equal for an R equals minus one then we would have to make use of two analyses. We can then use the analyses as input for the fatigue life prediction and important to note is that if we have a linear elastic solution and our overlap ratio is less than two then we can actually scale the loads up and down. If we are in the linear elastic domain and the overlap ratio is greater than two then well we will still need a couple of solutions but only one data set per maximum load. One of the benefits is that the file sizes can be kept small because there is no need to output anything but the stresses in the very last increment. 
and it also will not be as element heavy if you choose to focus solely on the tooth root and or the flank. For a proper force transfer you can't really leave the one or the other out. You will need to mesh the root and the flank rather finely but that is very very low key or low, low cost labor in terms of the whole analysis work. To take that a step further, one could easily envision using submodels for detailed investigation and still speeding up the analysis process. So what about this point of maximum stress? Numerical investigations have shown that the position of the maximum stress during the meshing is dependent on the relative deflection of the tooth. Now this deflection is dependent on, for one, Young's modulus, the bending stiffness of the tooth and the applied load, which in turn allows us to derive a function, or rather produce a regression function, where the relative deflection acts as a driver to calculate the positioning angle of the actual tooth, the way it's supposed to be assembled in Abacus CAE. The Dependencies that I've just listed, Young's modulus, bending stiffness and so on, also mean that gear quantities like the modulus and the profile shift factors are automatically being taken into account. So where do we go from here? Well, you need a, a wheel geometry in order to be able to analyze anything. And you can get to a wheel geometry either by using handbooks and very very sophisticated drawing. You can do hand drawings, you can do little diagrams, you can create them in whatever tool you have. And there are some really good textbooks on the matter. The second is to sit down and draw everything by hand in a computer-aided design package like Katia or SolidWorks. But you then well, you, you don't exactly get stuck, but the next little hurdle comes when you're trying to translate this all from CAD to FEA. And once you've translated it to FEA, then comes the final hurdle. How do you pass the information from the FEA on to the fatigue life prediction? This is where the thought of automation. On the back of the idea of automation, I would now like to demonstrate to you Fast Gear Fatigue Analysis version 1 in live action. The first thing that we will consider is how to generate the model in question. And for that purpose we will use standardized gear equations to generate the tooth geometries of the spur pinion and the gear wheel. We are solely focusing on spur gears for this very very first version. It's a limitation but it will prove very very useful. What you can do is to set different materials. You can set all of your parameters that describe the gear geometry. You then go on to set up the analysis parameters for both stress and fatigue, so as to say add surface finish, surface quality, and also load ratios. Once you've gone through and checked all your parameters, all you need to do is click Create Spur Gear Model, sit back and watch the show, and this actually happens in real time. One could argue that this is not extremely impressive, this is a, this is a simple one-stage spur gear. Um, however, I would like to draw attention to the fact that everything is done on a off-the-rack, standard, non-CAD laptop and if one tries to extend the thought to entire gear trains or more complicated geometries the benefit becomes even more visible. The mesh we have chosen is clearly not appropriate for an entire stress analysis but it serves the purpose of showing how the entire integration can be done. The second step is to run the stress analysis and this is probably the least exciting of all the steps. Uh, specifically considering that all you do is press the button submit job which uses a static analysis in the elastic domain and it uses contact. Once you have the results from the stress analysis you can now run the fatigue analysis. And the way this is done is that an ODB placeholder is generated, every safe is run in the background and the results are written back to the placeholder we specified. 
Once the fatigue analysis has been conducted, it is time to look at the results. Obviously, this is what we want. This is the exciting bit. Easy as that, you call the ODB and display the fatigue results with a preset color gradient in the visualization module. Specifically because for fatigue, you need to look at the results in reverse color order. We will now zoom in on an area and simply look at the fatigue life prediction of the root elements. We're not interested with the flank or the bulk of the object, this is simple demonstration purposes. And therefore, the impressive item to highlight is that in spite of a very rough mesh, or a very coarse mesh, we are able to locate the crack initiation point exactly where it should be along the face width of the gear. So what's in store for the next, say, couple of versions of fast gear fatigue analysis? Well, the very next version should include a much tighter control of the mesh. You should be able to perform localized FEA of the root and the flank, and there should be an immense increase in gear input details so that you can look at profile shift corrected gears, V plus and V minus gears. We also aim to link the plugin to standardized libraries of gear parameters as supplied by, for example, AGMA or DIN. And when it comes to extensions, um, the natural most organic continuance is to look at helical gears, but these are really not in any particular order. We would also like to look at including cycloid tooth profiles, worm gears, crown gears, and finally planetary gears. I would also, before concluding, like to direct special thanks to Mr. Frank Goetz of Simulia Germany, who was absolutely crucial in developing the plugin and making the joint effort as much of a success as it has been. At this stage, all that remains for me is to thank you for your kind attention. I hope this presentation has sparked your interest in fatigue a little and that I was able to show how well integrated FEA and fatigue analysis can be with a bit of careful planning and some engineering enthusiasm. Again, thank you all for listening and goodbye.